Hey everybody! Today in this video we're going to dive into the Godot game engine. This video is primarily from the lens of somebody getting into game development that came from web development, because that's just the perspective I had when I was learning Godot. Uh, but if that's not you, that's okay. We're going to keep this friendly to anybody that's new to Godot. I've spent the last year or so trying out many different game engines for my next game, and Godot quickly became my favorite, so I'm really excited for you to try it. So what's Godot? Godot is an open source game engine that's completely free to use and distribute games that you make, no strings attached. It's super fast, super performant for both 2D and 3D games. It supports all the major platforms. Whether you're just getting into game development or you have a few releases under your belt, Godot is an excellent choice for your next game. You can download the installer for free from their website. Link is in the description below. Real quick, if we haven't met before, my name's Drew, and I teach people how to get into game development. If you're interested in learning about game development using web technologies or technologies like Godot, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. I've got a lot more videos like this on the way. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new Godot project. As soon as you launch Godot, you'll get a little window like this. All you have to do is click New Project over here. I'll just browse to the folder I want. I'll call this uh, Intro to Godot create the folder, and then create and edit will start the project. Here we are in our freshly created project. See the basic layout of the Godot editor here is a scene tree over here. You have access to your file system, which is just the uh, directory on your computer that has all the files in it. Uh, we have different views like the 2D view, script view, asset views. There's some other options here that I have hidden based on my preferences. And then an inspector over here. What we're looking at here in the middle of the screen is our scene editor. And scenes are like the building block of Godot. You could think of them as an equivalent to like a React component or something like that in the web development world. And so what we're going to do is just make our first one, which starts empty. And so over here in the scene tree, I'll click 2D scene. Node 2D is one of the most basic building blocks. Godot comes with a lot of pre-built types of nodes, and we'll cover a few of them today. Nodes are infinitely nestable, so we can keep adding things inside this node, and over time this will grow into a whole tree. So what I'll do is right-click here, add a child node, and this time instead of using the basic node 2D, which really doesn't do much, we're going to search for sprite. Choose that. Over here on the right, now that sprite is selected, we get some options in our inspector here. The first thing we need to do is add a texture to our sprite, and that's going to be the actual image that we want to show. I've pre-prepared some images for us as usual, so what I'm going to do is right-click over here in the file system, say Open in File Manager, and this will open the games project in um, your file system. I'm on a Mac right now, so in my case it's my intro to Godot, this is the project directory. What I'll do is right-click, make a new folder, uh, just call it Sprites. That's arbitrary, you can name it whatever you want, it's just me staying organized. And in here I will right-click and paste um, three images that I've prepared ahead of time. These images, again, these are just things I prepare for the video. It's some of the same assets we've seen before in previous videos. Now we'll see these files appear in our project down here. You see the same sprites folder that I created before in my real computer file system. What you can do now is just grab an asset over here. So I'll grab the demo map and you drag it in um, to your texture slot here. And as soon as you, you do that, you'll see that the texture is appearing on the screen. Now that we've actually added some stuff to the scene, I'm going to go ahead and save it. So I'll just hit Command S and name it. I'm going to name this world map. And just so you know, this .tscn, that is Godot's file extension for a scene. Over time, we'll have a bunch of different types of scenes, and we can compose them together. Now that I've hit save, you can see that uh, the name of the scene has changed up here, world map. What I'm going to do is actually go over to my node 2D and name it the same thing. That's really just a cleanliness thing to help us stay organized. If I zoom in on our sprite now, and inspect it over here. See that our inspector comes with a bunch of different options that are hidden under these little spindly directory things. Um, so if I show offset, see that we get some positioning options here, where right now the sprite is dead center, and it's even got the center checkbox. So you can untick that, and now it'll be positioned by the top left corner. That looks good for us. But if I zoom in, you'll notice that it looks kind of blurry, and that's because we need to tell Godot how to properly import this type of file. Now if I go back here and open my file system back up again, my Mac one, you'll see that Godot has created these .import files next to each asset that I've added to the project. The import file just has instructions for Godot on how it should handle this certain type of asset because different images can be rendered differently by the game engine. Uh, and what we want to do is specify that these are pixel art assets that'll make them nice and crisp. To do that, we just go over to our import tab in Godot. We select an asset that we 
added. So anything in our sprites folder and in here, um, see, it's got a bunch of like 3d options and other stuff that that's not going to be relevant to us today. Cause we're just working with 2d. So what you can do is go over here to preset and select 2d pixel. What that does is just load in a bunch of smart decisions for when you're working with pixel art, things like, um, image filtering and uh, not caring about 3d. And once that's done, you can just click this re-import button. And now you'll see that the image on screen is nice and crisp. We need to do this process too for any image that we add to the project. And so if you remember, we added three at once. What we can do is actually go to preset and then whatever we set for this one, we can set that as the default for loading in a texture. Now any files we end up adding after this will automatically get the correct import settings. However, uh, these we did uh, bring these in before we did that preset. So let's go ahead and select both of those, preset 2D pixel again, and re-import. Now we can actually run our game because we have something to look at. And so what I'll do is hit Command B. I think it's uh, just F5 on Windows and Linux, but on Mac it's Command B. And right away, we're going to get this warning only the first time you try to boot up the game. And that's saying that we haven't set a main scene. The main scene will be the one that boots up when we start the game. And so what we can do is select it. It gives us a nice uh, file system here. We just choose world map and then open. Now our game's running, but it doesn't look very nice. Uh, the image is tiny. It's all the way to the top left corner and there's this nasty gray around. So what we're going to do is change some project settings to have it by default give us more of a more appropriate viewport size, something more like this. So let's go to our project settings. So I'll close the game, go up here to project, project settings. While we're here, there's a few things we're going to change. First, let's go down to debug settings. And in here, there's an option for force FPS. What we want to do is set this to 60. If you don't do that and you run the game, uh, the computer will try to just run as many frames as it possibly can, which is awesome if you have a performant computer. But in my case, it turns my computer into a helicopter. The fans start going nuts and it's running way more frames than we need. We're fine with just running this game at 60 frames per second. So we'll set it there. Next, we're going to set that viewport size to be correct. So we'll go down to uh, display window. And then in here, what we have are two different things to play with. We have the size of the actual window that pops up and then the size of the game viewport itself. And so our game viewport, we actually want it to be pretty small because we're, we got that classic like pixel art Game Boy kind of thing going on. Um, so I'm gonna set this to 288 by 162, just a nice 16 by nine aspect ratio that I like for pixel art. It's gonna work fine for us today. Um, but we don't, if we leave these other two, test width and test height at zero, then it's gonna launch the game at this tiny little window. What we want is to actually blow it up and have a nice like cushy space to work with. So I'm gonna set these values to the same aspect ratio, but larger values. So how about 1024 and uh, 576? Last thing we're gonna do in here is scroll down to the bottom and in the stretch mode, we're gonna change this to 2D and that will just change how the game reacts when we resize the window. There's a link in the description below that describes all the options here. With that, we'll close this. And now if I zoom out in my editor, see that we have these nice blue lines now and the blue lines tell us what the camera will see. So now I'll save, hit Command B again to rerun the game, and see now we're much more zoomed in and it's a little easier to work with. I'm not in love with what this looks like right now, so what I'm gonna do is drag our sprite into the middle, which you can just click and drag it, um, and I'll go back to our scene tab. And in here, let's, let's introduce a new node type. Um, I'll add a child node and search for uh, rect, color rect. So I choose that. And what this is, like Godot lets you import assets that you can have on the screen and all that, but it also gives you some nice drawing tools. So here, this is just a regular old rectangle with a solid color. So what I'll do is make this, trying to give us like a nicer background color. I'll make this larger than the viewport, and then I'll change it to something that looks a little more like sky blue. I don't know, something like that, maybe. It's a little stormy, whatever. Um, and then see that it's appearing over our sprite right now, but what you can do is just go into the scene layer and this is the order that things will be drawn in. So you just grab this thing, drag it above the sprite, and now it's kind of a nice sky background. I'll move the sprite just a little bit up here. So now when I run the game, we see our world, but with a nicer background. So now we've seen a little bit of this manual scene editor that works inside the Godot editor program, but let's get into some actual code now. So code in Godot lives in files called scripts, which you might imagine. Um, scripts can be attached to nodes or they can just be independent files on their own. But what, what we'll do is um, come to world map, right click on it, or you can click on this button, but right click, um, attach script. 
And Godot is going to suggest a name for the file that we're creating, uh, the extensions uh, .gd. Godot actually comes with uh, the ability to use three different programming languages, at least at the time of this recording. Um, but we're just going to stick with GD script for now. It's my favorite. I'm just going to leave all these options as the default. I'll hit create, and that will create a .gd file on my machine. Now, after we created that new file, Godot redirected us to the script editor with their new file uh, pulled up here. Um, and I, let's, let's get it like a really quick intro to this programming language. So for one thing, um, every file that you work with is a class itself, but then you can also create subclasses inside the file. We'll do that in a second. Um, you typically always extend off an existing node type. So remember that we created world map as a um, node 2D. And so this file here, node 2D is going to have a bunch of methods on it already or functions on it already that we can extend off of and overwrite or expand. So up top, we can make some member variables, and those are variables that will be available to anything in the script. So let's say like var drew equals a string a person. Uh, if you've done JavaScript before, this will look very familiar. Um, all the data types are here. So like um, we have arrays, let's look like that. Um, we have numbers, probably like all the stuff you'd expect. Um, there are, there's a concept of objects too, but they're not called objects um, for the basic kind of key value pair. Uh, these are actually called dictionaries in Godot. And in here we can do key values. It's important that you surround the keys with strings though. So key and then um, some value. This could also be a reference to a variable like uh, numbers right here. Functions are a thing too in Godot, as you might imagine. Uh, so we see an example of one down here that says ready, and that's a special one we'll talk about in a second. But we can define our own, we like function and then the name of it. And then um, any parameters it takes would go here, like um, name. And then in Godot, um, everything is indentation based. It's a language heavily inspired by Python. And so rather than using curly brackets and stuff like you do in JavaScript, uh, what you do is uh, anytime you're going to start a new block, you end the line with a colon. The next line will start with one indent like this. Uh, and now anything inside here is the body of the function. So in here I can say print, which is the equivalent of like console log. Um, so it's like log to the console. Uh, pass here is a way to just end the block. Like here this ready function doesn't do anything, so it just immediately ends. Uh, if you already have other things in the function, you don't need this. You can just take that out, and this is totally valid. We'll dive more into logic stuff later, but it kind of works the same way, where if you have if, um, you know, drew equals equals person, which we defined up there at the top, then you do colon, next line, anything in the if condition will be indented. So print, yep, and then, you know, else works the same way. It lines up right with the if, has a colon after it, enter it'll be indented nope we'll get into more realistic coding examples later in this video now i'm going to delete this block of nonsense come back here to the ready function the ready function here is a specially named thing that godot is waiting for and expecting uh, typically if we didn't have it here we get a default blank one from node 2d uh, but the ready function, it's kind of like a lifecycle method in a way that Godot will call this when this scene enters the tree for the first time. It's kind of, you can think of it as stuff that needs to happen on the very first frame that this scene is present. So again, I'll just fill this out with some stuff. So we'll say, oh, world map has entered the scene. And now when I boot the game, we have a script attached to our world map. That's the only scene we have present. We'll see this being logged in the output below. World map has entered the scene. Close out of this. We have another life cycle kind of method. Th those are my terms, they're not Godot terms. It's kind of like if you've done any React before, think of things like component did mount, uh, component will unmount. Godot has some of those same concepts as well. Uh, the first one is this ready one, but there's another one called process. And this, we've talked about game loops in my videos before. Um, but this, this process function is going to be like our step that runs on every single frame of the game. And so what I can do is say print, uh, make, maybe make a new variable here. So like frames, we'll just make a simple counter. So frame start to zero, uh, we'll say frames plus equals one and then print frames. 
And now when I run this, this print is gonna happen on every single frame. And so you'll see the output down here start to go crazy. It can be stressful to watch this kind of thing, but don't worry, it's totally normal in game development. There's usually some concept of a loop that's constantly firing. Okay, I'm gonna, rem I'm gonna remove this now. Like I mentioned before, this whole file is its own class, but in we can also create other classes inside this file. So if we have like class cheetah, in here we could have all those same concepts, like the same kind of life cycle-ish functions, like func ready. And then we could also define our own public method, so like func roar. Up at the top, we can create a new instance of this class, so like var cheetah. And the way you do that is um, Godot now knows that a class is defined, so we can say cheetah dot new to create a new instance of it, and then cheetah dot roar, call that method. Now when I boot up the game, we get our first text and then our roaring cheetah. You can also load in classes from other files, and we're going to cover that in just a little bit here. So that was the super basics of GD script, which is that default programming language that comes with Godot. Now let's go ahead and make another scene that will live inside our main scene. So to do that, let's do it. In the editing process of this video, I realized I was going on a little bit longer than I wanted to. So I'm going to stop this video right here, and then we're going to cut it into a part two. In the next video, we'll get started on our hero character. Thanks so much for watching this far. Uh, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video in just a second here.